Oh, not bad, not bad. I feel like I've been here forever. I have, but it feels longer. That's what I was going to ask you. Is I, I don't know if you remember this, but the first time I ever met you, I was working for The Athletic, and I got sent down to see you guys in high school, and it was the Oregon guys together. It was you, Sean, Sean Ballers. And, yeah. And there was a lot of, like, asking you guys about what you thought your experience was going to be like. I think that was, like, when it was, like, the Cali Flock thing. Cali like, Flock. Uh -huh. How long ago does that kind of that phase of your life feel and how much I mean this is a huge question but like how much have you changed during your time from when it was like let's just get all this talent together and go to Oregon and do this thing to like as you said you've done this a lot now <laughs> <laughs> um I mean from my own perspective I'd say a lot has changed both in myself and like as the team as a whole as we've seen um I think you know with a lot of parts that coming in like my freshman class there's probably like maybe six or seven of us left out of everybody from class of 19 that came in. Um, I mean, we've all stayed close. We've all connected so far from the last four years, going on to five now. And I mean, I've definitely matured a lot since being here. Um, but I mean, it's just been crazy just going on to my fifth year, just thinking about it. Um, I think overall this, this past summer, I've definitely taken into like just relaxing a bit, and like realizing being where my where I where my feet are, and because um, every day freshman year I would always walk by the mo, I'd come in through the mo parking lot and I'd just see the big O, and I'd be like, damn, I'm here, I'm here, and like I try not to forget that. And this whole summer has been, damn, it's my last one. Like I remember walking in here first year and be like, wow, I can't believe I'm here. But now it's like, damn. One more year and I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, awesome. Yeah. With that one more year left, is there like sort of a sense of urgency to make it, you know, a special last year? Oh yeah, for sure, without a doubt. Now it's uh, there's there's no other chances left. This is the last one to go out and show out, um, show prove what I can do for this team and for myself as well, and give it all I got. How competitive is Dan? Real competitive. Yeah. <laughs> I say he's probably one of the most competitive coaches, just probably because he's one of the younger coaches, but. He's getting out there with us. He's getting active with us. He he argues with us. He he has the, his fun with us. A um, couple of times it'll be like, damn, coach, you need to calm down a little bit. Like, <laughs> it gets crazy, but he's definitely a competitive guy. It's 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 interesting. Even just we just finished our press conference with him, and you know, ninety nine percent is just very much coach speak. It's it's Dan talking about the moment and yeah. not getting ahead of himself. But then at the end, he did a little mic drop about Colorado. He was like, Seen I don't know. What, I, I don't just know. watched it before it came up. Yeah, <laughs> like. It, this like where does that part of his personality kind of mix with like the I'm going to be the stately coach who doesn't say anything out of turn I think it's just his passion for football and his passion for being here at Oregon and with us as players and as a team um, you know he, he does a great job of like holding himself holding himself back from getting too aggressive at times and then there's times where the passion will really come out and show and you can just tell like he really loves this he loves football he loves being around football he loves coaching football you, you guys like when he do oh a yeah, mic drop sure. Moment like that or something. I mean, it, it definitely does bring some energy, just to see you know having the coach match the energy that we're trying to have. So it's great to see. Awesome, thank yeah. you. Does it surprise you guys when he says something like that, or is that more commonplace behind the scenes? Um, nah, it's definitely a surprise, just because you know he's our head coach. He's always trying to tell us keep our composure, don't let anything get to us. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it happens. It's it's part of the game, both on and off the field. People get competitive, get passionate about the sport. Totally. What's it like for you just knowing that you're going to be leading this linebacker core this year? <laughs> uh, it's definitely a big step, but I mean, because um, in the OLB room, we've had, we have five new guys, five freshmen, and then three old heads, as we we call us. Um, so it's it's definitely been a big step trying to help everybody, keep everybody uh, along the same tracks as us, trying to keep pulling them with us. We know the playbook, they don't, so it's like, we're trying to pull them along with us, make sure they know their stuff. So when, when I'm gone, they'll be able to do the same. What's life going to be uh, like on the sideline without your dancing buddy? Noah uh... Sewell. <laughs> it's been long. I've We talk here and there. We chop it up. Um, you know, he's doing his thing out there with, the with Chicago, but I do miss him. We, we got close, super close, especially being roommates. Um, a lot of times I look out for him. A lot of times he look out for me. So it's just I miss him for sure. Mrs. Jordan Birch had a chance to share in either one of the Gabriels or one of the position group meetings, just a little bit of his, his background, his story, what his mom's going through for you guys. 
I've never been in the room with him when he's been able to share that part, but yeah. What um, you guys talked about on the field for him that like you know, one of the South, former South Carolina teammates talked about like if he realized how good he is, like what he could bring. What yeah. What you saw in the spring, what you see in the summer, like what what is his ceiling? What do you think he is capable of? I definitely think he's he's got a high ceiling. Um, I can I can also say probably if if he really realizes the potential he has. He can make it super far. He's, you see him at practice all spring and even throughout summer, seeing his athleticism for how big he is and how fast he can move with that with that size. He's definitely got a great future ahead of him, and I think he'll he'll definitely push himself to that point. So I know he'll get there. Let me just go back to I think your freshman year. Just talk at the time about whether or not you were going to take a couple of years off to go on a mission, and that's a personal <coughs> choice whether you choose to not, or not to. But obviously. Kept playing every year. Yeah. So was was there a what was the conversation like in terms of deciding whether or not to do that or when to do that or whatnot? Um, so the initial plan, I mean, I guess it was an option was to go on my mission right out right out of high school, but then um, you know just talking with my parents and just you know just thinking to myself, um, I was fresh off my ACL surgery, so I thought it was good to just stay back, play here, and see how it feels. And then, then my son came along. <laughs> so that was probably one of the biggest choices was just maybe being able to stay home and be with him and take care of him as he grew up. So that was probably my biggest choice. So that was that was ultimately the decision was? For once, sure. Once, was, um, once my son came, yeah. it was, I got to stay home. Mm -hmm. And yeah. How is that? How does fatherhood change? <laughs> a lot, a lot, definitely. Um, it comes with a lot of maturity. Um, like I've definitely matured a lot since having him. Um, decision making a lot on and off the field. Everything that I'm gonna do is gonna affect him and his life. So I always try to think what's best for him, and um, that's always in the front of my mind. Is just what am I gonna do that'll affect him in a positive way? Talk to me about the braid. Is that you know a nod to Star Wars? My and little red tail. And, and, and <laughs> you know, you know, what, 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 you know, have you always had that? I mean, no, I'm, I haven't always had it, but I mean, it's it's part of the culture. Um, a lot of Polynesians have it, Samoans, Tongans, Fijians, like you'll see a lot of them. Um, if, I'm not sure if you've seen Popo. Popo has his, uh, Ben Roberts has his, but like it's, it's it's been part of the culture for a long time. And um, it got to a point where me, Popo, and Ben were like, oh, we'll just get it. And like stuck with it since. Yeah. Someone said Troy has it too. Yeah, Troy, Troy's had it for a while too, yeah. So you guys are, yeah, you're expanding. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> what, what does the Hawaii game mean to you as, as one of those Polynesian guys? What is that game this year? Um, I wouldn't put it in that perspective as being like just a Polynesian game. It's, you know, it's going to be a game like all the other games we play. Um, and, you know, we, we'll see you once we get there. Yeah. Taki, <laughs> Taki's a handful. He's, I mean, he's also a father as well. So he, we have our split time. But most of the time, me and Taki, we hang out together. I'd say, not to be biased, but probably me and Taki are probably the closest roommates out of the whole team. Like we hang out all the time. We do stuff together. We have jokes together. Like um, today, we actually move out. But we ended up getting the spot next door to each other. So it's like, <laughs> you see how close we are. <laughs> yeah. So we, we still we're still keeping it close at this new apartment we're moving into. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Bo during the media day said that the defense likes to chirp a little bit. Who do you think oh, is the, sure. the person who chirps the most on, on the defense? Brandon Dorless. Okay. <laughs> I think he he definitely does start it, and then you know we'll carry on after him, and we'll just keep talking our own. To, so. It definitely starts with Doyless, though. Doyless is always the first one talking. <laughs> is there a player or a group of players that have stood out from their summer work that you think is ready to be catapulted into a, a big season for the fall? Yeah. Um, working with my group, the OLBs, mostly, obviously. Um, I definitely say that freshman class got a lot of talent coming in. It got yeah. a lot of heat. Uh, so I think that OLB position will be set for the next three, four years while they're all here. They're ready now. Yeah, for sure. I'd say, um, you know, working with closely with Tatum and uh, Mateo throughout spring, they definitely, I could definitely say they'll be ready. But once once they get the playbook down, like solid, they'll be ready. They got plenty of talent to go play play ball, and make plays this year. Of course. Thank you, Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, you guys. Appreciate you. This is my water.